Uh, okay. Oh, Looks I'm... like we're live. Hey, Hi. everybody. So, um, I, I guess we'll start with introductions. Um, Anjan, do you yeah. want to start? Um, yeah. Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to the to the live stream and uh, for everybody looking at the recording later as well. Hey, and welcome. Um, my name is Anjan, and um, I'm a freelance uh, artist for computer games and for uh, comic projects and movies and things like that. And uh, this is basically the second e episode of some sort of Skillshare thing I did with Martin, who's going to introduce himself in a, in a bit. And um, this is my part where I share my skills, like he did a uh, Unity crash course for me a couple of uh, months ago, and now it's my turn to return the favor, and we are doing art direction for video games. Uh, microphone to you, Martin. Yeah, so I'm Martin. Uh, I'm a freelancer, too. I do game design, interaction design, and I also have a little indie studio called Track Bomb Studios, on which channel you are watching this. Um, yeah, as Anjan mentioned, I actually did uh, uh, a crash course earlier, which was all about um, an introduction to Unity 3D. And now Anjan, it's Anjan's turn, and I can lean back and ask stupid questions. And I'll take care of the chat, so if anybody has any questions, um, I'll try and catch them and forward them to Anjan. So that said, um, I'll leave um, the screen to Anjan and uh, let you guys enjoy whatever he has prepared. Yeah. There we go. No, come on, present to everyone. Yes, there we go. The floor is all yours. Okay, can everybody see my screen? Can you see my screen? I can see your screen. Okay, because uh, Hangout is black for me. Okay, um, what, what we basically do today is like this is um, just a, a, an open window in Flash, which I'm basically using as a whiteboard, so I can, I can uh, draw things here. Um, and I can also uh, drag elements from my library into the screen and then share them with you and and draw silly lines on everything, um, whatever I need. And uh, the thing is, when we now talk about art direction, what do we mean by art direction? I tried to explain this in the announcement text a little bit. This is about creating uh, a very comprehensive visual visual language for whatever project you do. And today we're doing this um, with a uh, focus on video games. This means, what, what does that mean, visual, acoustic visual style? This is about creating um, content, like what the art is, uh, a mixture of the content. I will explain what these things are, plus the style. And the direction process is uh, the process of collect, collecting um, elements that would be really sweet and nice in your project, and then uh, selecting from that collection only the type of, of images and stylized elements that you really, really need, and then making sure that during the process of production, everything adheres to this vision of the year. So these are the things that we are going to talk about as uh, practices and methods, and these are the things that we need to talk about in order to understand what basically the material is we are working with. So when the uh, uh, when we talk about art, that we know what needs to be directed. Frame. Um, and the first thing we need to talk about is ideas. Um, I keep this as like some sort of headline on top. What do I mean with idea? Um, there are different systems to, to talk about all the sort of design decisions you can make. And all of these systems are kind of specialized to a, a, a cluster of design decisions. For example, we could talk about color palettes. 
uh, I'm just writing that down like so. Could talk about a color palette for a project. We could talk about uh, rendering style or shading style. So if it's a 3D game, is it like photorealistic uh, 3D art or is it um, cell shaded? Um, these things like that. We could talk about when uh, we have characters, what kind of costumes they are wearing and what kind of haircuts they are having. And I could like fill up these lists for hours, basically, um, because the thing with ideas, it's pretty arbitrary what we understand an idea is. So let's jump in with an example. So this is a very effective cluster of ideas. This is part of the Coca-Cola branding, as you might know. And here we have a bunch of ideas, a bunch of ideas present. For example, oops, sorry. Um, for example, we have the color, the color red. We have a certain si type, uh, sort of typography going. We have all these tiny drops on the surface of the element. And we have the bottle, which is actually a trademark shape. So if you want to come up with some sort of uh, refreshment drinks, you are not allowed to use bottles in that shape, because this kind of idea is trademark. Um, the thing is, I could now like turn into, uh, I, I could now like go even deeper, we could all talk about the idea that the, the red goes darker to the edges, or uh, here we could talk about that how the bottle cap is designed. We could talk about individual elements of the of the typography. But the thing with with these ideas is that it's pretty arbitrary what we recognize as an idea and what we read as an idea. So when we have something like when we have something like um, We have something like um, um, a tree, for example, as an example for what ideas are. It's it's our it's it's our own decision what part of the tree we talk about when it comes to being an idea. We could look at the at the overall silhouette of the tree. That's would be an idea. We could look at individual branches of the tree. Or we could also look at twigs. How is one twig shape? Is that a nice idea? What kind of decisions went into shaping each twig? And then we can talk about what kind of decisions went into creating each leaf. But there's no, no system to that. It's just that's some sort of um, our personal decision, how deep we want to go, um, basically how much we want to zoom in, and, and how many parts um, do we think it's helpful to break every sort of image apart. And we could also talk about like this this tree has a background, for example. And then what's in the background in the background is a house. And what are the ideas that shape the architecture of the house and, and the coloring and things like that. So um, let's talk about ideas then to make it more tangible. Let's talk about ideas with a concrete Example like Spider-Man. Um, Spider-Man has has a couple of, of neat ideas going. And so he has like some sort of uh, texture which is prevalent in most of Spider-Man's incarnations, with all the red areas having a net on top, and then we have the combination of red and blue. We have these eyes, they're also pretty iconic. 
and then we have this heavy metal this heavy metal um, hand gesture to shoot shoot the next. The horns. Yeah, the horns. Satan's horns. So here's an image from how that looks in the comic books. And you see that these are all reoccurring elements. And these ideas can, of course, be remixed into completely different things. And, um, and this, is, this is kind of the, the, the tricky part for any sort of art director or artist who works with an art director. Sometimes these two people are one, people, one person all together, just directing yourself into something cohesive, is the ability to, is the ability to look at an image like this and being able to recognize like the leaves from the tree and what is the branches of this artwork. You see that there's this texture. Um, the texture I mentioned is now basically an element that has been remixed and reapplied into a completely different context for different designs, um, different uh, styles like, like this baby Spider-Man or like this really um, graphical design on the cap. And this is the way we need to, to look at every sort of image that we are looking at. We need to be able to break it apart into the, the ideas that we see in, in each design. And then we have to um, have these Lego bricks we basically created and then be able to put them together again into something that is unique for, for the design that we come up to. And not just, of course, from one source, but from many sources. We need to be I, able to. I'd have a quick, stupid question. Do I it. keep saying ideas, and I keep thinking symbols. Yeah, symbols is, um, is one type of, of idea, which is basically um, from, from what referring to is probably the semiotic thing, which is about visual language, and symbols are one type of um, visual language. Um, I could like go back to, to this slide here, and then I could start writing symbols. Yeah, so symbols, and then I could um, also write things like camera angles. Um, symbols like are, are uh, images that are made by humans to symbolize um, concepts that have no that, that have no appearance in nature basically so you cannot have a symbol for an apple but you can have a symbol you can use an apple as a symbol for sin for example sin is a human concept and in order to represent it visually you need to symbol um, yeah, the, the thing with why I like to use ideas is because we have this universe of of visual elements at our disposal, but we can only use the ones that we can think of, which is which is important later because part of the art direction, as I said um, before, it's the like the collecting part, is part of the art direction is that we expand what is available for us individually by collecting all the visual elements that are out there that are possibly relevant for what we do. Have I addressed your question? Yeah, yeah, I got it. Ideas is more like a catch-all term for everything that could be vis mostly visuals, because we're talking about visuals. Yeah. That could be a part of a visual aesthetic or picture, um, and then you could in some form replicate and then generate a style out of replicating it. It's 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 basically um, yeah totally but it, it's it's basically like the, the 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 smallest no not only the smallest but it's 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 a it's a unit it's basically like some sort of graphical unit that we can extract from the world we see around us and from pop culture we look at and then apply to what we do ourselves some of these ideas for example come from the tools we use like, for example. Um, 
rendering a character in 3D is a different idea than uh, drawing it with a pencil, because it creates it, it, it is a new visual component in the representation yeah. of that character. Let's have a few more examples to get behind it. So, so for example, here is a um, character called Sam Fisher from the Splinter Cell series. And one of the main ideas um, to make this character pretty iconic is the way his the way his um, uh, night vision goggles are shaped with uh, this distinct three glowing lenses, which then mm -hmm. can be abstracted to be like just an object that he holds in his hand when he's not in his official presence. Because this is from the game where he plays an undercover agent and can't wear his official stealth agent uniform, and this is just a merchandising article where they mashed up the, all the ideas that are around um, uh, Raving Rabbits, from Raymond Raving Rabbits, and then they dressed him up in this rabbit up in black, gave him these... Three eyes and stubble. Yeah, three eyes and stubble, and that's all you need for um, Splint. That's, that's the essence of Sam Fisher. That's the offense. Three eyes, like black suits, three eyes and stubble. That's Sam Fisher. He are, he has a very famous character you all might know. As you can see, the um, 3D model, like all the ideas that went into shaping the character, like the proportions, um, uh, like the roundness of each shape, things like that, they are both intact in both versions. But what we are happening here now is that it has two different applications. Like this is a very happy nostalgic platformer thing, Super Mario Brothers Wii. Yeah, colorful, so friendly. And he basically looks like a toy. Yeah. Like, you see, there's there's no no actual clothing um, uh, folds. Like, it, it's just, he it looks like he's like done in plastic, basically. And this is from the Smash Brothers series on this side. And you see how all the textures have been amplified to be much more realistic. And all the colors have been toned down. It's still a red head, but it's a much more darker red head and much more dirty and much more gritty. And you can see, for example, if you look at the gloves, let's zoom in a little. When you look at the gloves, you see that it has um, uh, like seams and um, elements. It's actual jeans. The shorts, the buttons are real metal. Um, wrinkles on the shirt. Yeah, so here are some of the, the, the ideas that are equal, uh, the ideas that are similar have been um, uh, like have been kept to keep the, uh, the iconic value so that we still have Mario. Yeah, they have to recognize him as Mario. Yeah, and but then we have like two different stylistic applications of the same thing. Much, this is much more about confrontation and winning and competition, which you can also see at, on the pose, right? Yeah. Um, the way a character is posed is also part of the ideas that you can have for any sort of image you create with one character. You, of course, have to talk about um, art direction not in the creation of, of the individual designs, but also all the images and camera angles and situations that your, for example, character, as we ha have here, will be appearing over the course of your project. Right, so if you have a like Super Mario Brothers character, um, probably needs a good look and profile because we're going to see him running from left to right a whole lot. Mm -hmm. These things. So um, another example. Here's now n another example about how the same um, ideas then can translate into completely different media which is also pretty nice because the ideas they had for the character design overall are pretty easy to replicate for human beings. It's not, mm -hmm. a fancy, not a fancy thing, so there's a lot of mileage you get from this idea. And the ideas itself are also so iconic that you can, um, as we did with the Spider-Man before, just pick individual ideas and put them into a different context, and they're still working. This idea of the cap is now representative for the whole character, 
as when I'm wearing my Batman shirt, it's representative for my relation to Batman and Gotham and the whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, so this is also important that we learn to. Yeah, but uh, like this case only works because Mario is a very, very famous has a very, very famous collection of ideas. Yes. So that he has in fact become a symbol. Yes, this has something to do with exposure, of course. Yeah. We are exposed to Mario a lot. <laughs> so um, he, he's appearing in all sorts of places. He's appearing on the consoles. Um, like, and he's doing this for like 30 to 40 years now. So um, the iconography of, of, of Mario is, is pretty, pretty strong, like, like a brand. But the, um, it only works because the design is so easily abstract. Uh, like you can, you can yeah. Like it, it's the, the ideas in the design are so easy to remix and so easy to put into different contexts. Here's, all, here's also um, three sets of the same, of, of very same ideas about the character. Um, typically, we, for example, we have the pointy head. We have um, a broadsword. Which part of the symbols is usually that it's left handed. Interesting. Yeah, it's yeah. one of the things about Link that is um, like kind of unique. I, I think in one game he wasn't left handed and people made a fuss about it. I think it was the V version because they wanted people to have the Wiimote in the right hand because they're right handed people. Okay. But that's certainly part of his, because there's very few left-handed, like, big heroes, I think. Yeah. So we have the green poncho. And uh, also the way his hair, haircut, is also, yeah. is also always the same. And these are... Um, you could like, add pointy ears and the shield. And yeah, yeah. We, we could, could go on forever. We, 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 yeah, basically we go on forever, but what is um, important for, especially for this slide, is how this slide allows us to to look at all these three clusters of ideas and um, see how they are all um, combined with different ideas depending on the style. Mm. Yeah, we have like different sort of body proportions depending on um, what kind of, of feeling the character, like what kind of game context that has. The one in the middle is actually from the 90s. I think it's it's linked to the cross artwork, or even earlier, one of the NES titles. And um, the people who have who grew up with this thing in the middle from the 90s, they now, of course, have different sensibilities. They now want to have to be, want this to be a bit more epic. So we have this Twilight Princess thing going on on this side where the materials are much more realistic. We have a much a bigger increase in detail. Yeah, it's more like, desaturated style. It looks more serious. Yeah, but more, more serious and more 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 textured, um, and it more um, also technically believable because of also mm. the way the, the bells are working. And yeah, the those straps and buckles and. Yeah, and then we have like for the super nostalgic, for the super nostalgic people, basically a throwback to the eight and sixteen bit visuals with like super childlike proportions and um, but something um, and, and a very cute cartoony rendering style which is for the um, I think this is Minish Cap it's, uh, or well, Wind Waker but it's the it's the, the same DS versions I think yeah the DS versions of the character yes basically. and so the ideas are not only the things that we can talk about when we look at the character and and like try to understand how the character works, but also the rendering style. As these are also the ideas that it can be um, combined. A very good example for this is. Uh, I just interrupt you real, pre just briefly. Um, Phil Garnell asked if he can interact via audio, and no, you can't. I'm part of the broadcast, so I'm gonna converse with Anjin. And if you guys have questions, you need to ask them via the Q and A system of the Hangouts, and then I'll forward them to Anjin for you. All right. Sorry yeah. for the interruption. Perfect. No, no, no. Just, just keep on. Um, so I'm just going to remove this. So just for the understanding, like even if you know what kind of lines you want to draw, like what kind of visual you choose for the lines as well, is also 
part of the ideas collection. And here, just, just for comparison, this is like also one character, three contexts, because the way you publish your character and the, the functions you want your design to um, to accomplish depends that. And I, I really like the, the middle one, where it's a kid's toy. Um, and this is a really fun and colorful happy Batman, which is not... Um, yeah, he's smiling. Yeah, like it's a super, super fun time Batman because for the kids. And also his ears <laughs> are stubby, stubby nipples and not pointy bad ears. Um, but these are all the... Blue. And he's blue. But these these um, stylistic design decisions that uh, come to for the Fisher Prize Batman figure, these are not part of the Batman universe. These are um, pulled from the style of the figures, which is called Imaginext, and they have different sorts of lines, like with pirates and knights, and like typical boy-themed um, toy sets, and to make Batman fit in, they just use the body proportions and the soft shapes and the color palettes to make him fit in. And, um, bam, bam, bam. and here's an example of a company that does that all the time. We have like a bunch of characters which are actually designed in completely different contexts, coming from different universes. But then, the um, the, the ideas that make a Lego figure are applied to each individual design to to make it cohesive and feel feel connected. So, um, do we have now any question about what an I um, what an idea is. Do we have uh, questions about that? Um, I don't. I think we, we um, looked at it pretty thoroughly, but if somebody from the audience has any questions, feel free to throw them in. Um, while we're waiting for a couple questions, um, somebody's pointing out that back in uh, the medieval age nights, uh, when they had to defend towers from the inside, because like circular stairways are turning clockwise, Holding a sword in the left hand was more effective. I still <laughs> think I still think Link is left-handed because he's not defending towers. <laughs> because, <laughs> but uh, it's an interesting uh, aside. So, any questions from the audience on the on the idea of ideas or the concept of ideas? It's basically any sort of Lego brick for design we have. Um, this is, of course, also part of a of a sometimes bigger philosophical debate about what is what like creativity is and where ideas come from and what is original and uh, what is a ripoff and what is a remix and what is an homage things like that we will um, which is an interesting point which might go beyond the uh, scope of this tutorial but yeah absolutely how much, how much of an idea can you remove and because like that's what Lego does, and like the remixing is, you remove everything that's not essential, but have it still be recognizable. Or that's what the what Nintendo did with the Club Nintendo icon. Like yes, you reduced Mario to his red cap with the M, and yeah. that's that's the absolute minimum probably. If you remove the M from the red cap, you might not get it. This is basically like 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 for building sentences on Twitter. It's yeah. <laughs> you have like a very long idea, and then there's a lot of um, a, lo a lot of uh, tricks to to remove all the non-essential information to make that thing fit into 140 characters that maybe also have a hashtag and a link in that way. Um, yeah. how, how can you reduce the idea to the required minimum? Yeah, to be still recognizable. All right, but there's no questions coming in on the topic of ideas, so I'd say we just continue with the program, yeah. and if some come up, we'll yeah, answer we'll... them later. Oh, okay, cool. Um, so then I'm going to use it. Yeah, so I'm just mumbling because I'm thinking. So I just remove that thing here. Okay, the next thing is uh, the collection. Collecting the collecting part. Um, as I mentioned before, what we're going to do is we're going to be collecting, selecting, and then reviewing during the during the, the production. And this the the thing is that we are basically have to as art directors have to create a funnel, and all the ideas go into that funnel. Then only the best ideas remain. 
and then these ideas will go on the pipeline where they will be produced and reproduced and used and then we have success and money and fame and yes. things like that. So, and <laughs> you, huh? It's that easy. It's that easy. So uh, we plan to do this for three hours but we managed to get on point into a half an hour so thank you everyone. Um, the thing is now, we, where does all this stuff we throw into the funnel come from? Um, and this is now the, the, the question about where do we get ideas from? And um, there's a, a, a few spaces in, in which we can which we can gather ideas. Just real quick, I'll, uh, if I can uh, uh, shove in a question in between. Um, sure. I'll try selecting the question. So. Um, uh, Phil asked if um, if it's important to identify the key elements of character so everything else that is superfluous can be discarded so that if the character is transcribed to other mediums, which is pretty much what we th said, I think. Um, it's, it's, it's important to... to um, can you repeat the question? I'm, I'm not sure if I got so, it. Um, He's, he's just asking for clarification that it is important for you to be able to understand what of your character is essential in case you transcribe it to another medium. Yes, this is, um, this is a very special case of what to do with, with your ideas. Like, if you can identify the ideas in your design individually and you recognize which of these ideas are, for example, most iconic, these are the things that are most important to understand who the character is and to recognize the character and for example also to make the re the character different from the rest of the characters like the peers this can be uh, the peers can be other characters within one story but they can also be characters from um, the competition yeah, like if you want to make it stand out from all the other characters that are also available for your audience um, these are the most important ideas and you need to be able to Prioritize. We will talk about um, working with ideas in, uh, in the second hour. All right. So, okay, well, where do we get ideas from? Like, ideally, the, the, what, what we would love to say is from the artist's mind. Like, everything, it's the artist's creativity. This is where all the ideas come from. And everything we need to know is, is part of the, the insane imagination of the artist. But what we actually do is we get the ideas from history, we get them from nature, we get them from pop culture. How was the quote from Andy Warhol? Uh, no, uh, no, it's, I'm looking it up. It's Pablo Picasso. Good artists copy, great artists steal. Which refers to external inspiration, I think. Yeah, well, this is this is this is part of the of the a, a bit of this this overarching philosophical debate, which we're not going to have. But there are people who are uncomfortable with the idea of using stuff that has been invented before. In uh, my opinion, they are uncomfortable because they are not knowing that they are doing this already, if they want or not. Yeah. There's an excellent web series on this topic, which is called Everything, Everything is, is a Remix. <laughs> yes. If you haven't seen it, go see it. It's spectacular. Yeah, Everything is a Remix. It's, it's, it's really, really nice. The basic idea is that whatever, whatever you as an artist, if you like, want to have like a great idea and you want to do something really, really cool, so, you want to come up with something really, really nice. Before it's on the paper, it needs to get into your head, and then you can put it on the paper. If it's not in your head, you can't put it on your paper. If it's not in your head, you can, like, if you don't have the information, you can't write about it. If you don't know how robotics work, you can't design a proper robot. Um, you can't create what you can't con conceive of. Basically. Yeah, that's that's basically the idea, and that means, and that means you need to, um, you 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 need to take the ideas um, from the things you can perceive and and research. 
So, as we were talking about Batman a moment ago, let's check Batman for a second. Um, one of the the the, the uh, most iconic things about Batman is, for example, that it is well, he's a bat. So there's the, this inspiration from nature, and a, a bat, for example, has a very distinguished anatomical feature, which are the bat wings. They have a very distinguished look. It has a very distinguished silhouette if you spread a bat out. And this is where most of the Batman iconography came from, for example, if you now look. This, this is like... It's very obvious that the bat symbol itself clearly resembles an abstract bat. Yeah, it's a very abstract um, icon of a bat, which is, for example, if you think about how how you would see bats in the wild, is, for example, like flapping um, above you, so you probably only see the wings anyway. Um, and then you have, like, different applications of the symbol, which then are um, reused over and over again. But this image itself um, comes from nature, basically. But then we have other elements, like um, the pulp hero heritage of the character, which is another thing that basically the, the writer or the inventor wanted to have present as an idea in, in the design. And so there's, for example, different ideas that pulp heroes um, especially the avenging, crime-fighting type of pulp heroes. Yeah, the mask is an important thing. The mask is an important thing, and the combination, what I do, is like the icon. Like, it's a certain symbol that is representative of the, the vigilante. Hmm. So that... The calling card of sorts. Yeah, the calling card of sorts. Like, that Batman is actually throwing calling cards. Like, like, like imagine, like, Martin Nirlka nameplates throwing at your enemies. Like, this is basically what he does. Because there's a long tradition of these pulp heroes, which are an evolution from um, mask, western, cowboy, uh, vigilante, so when the sheriff of the town is too stupid to... I think to... the Lone Ranger kind of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. So, but there was a huge tradition of, of writing these western heroes who were taking the law into their own hands. And then they, there's characters like Zorro, who were like cutting the Z or Z into their their victims, which is all sort of psychological warfare thing. So these elements have been used in uh, Batman, and then since it's it's uh, it's um, bad themed, sometimes we even get elements like mannerisms from Dracula, for example. And like Batman has now like an almost hundred year history. Of being used into different and, and remixed into different media by different artists um, into different times. He was, of course, also part of like World War II propaganda comics, all these things, and um, the and and everything is is a remix of these of these um, ideas and themes that come together. Basically, nothing just happens on its own, and it's also important because what we are talking about is visual language, and if you want to talk to your audience, you need to... You need to use symbols they understand. Yeah, you need to, you need to use um, images and understand. I have to object to your use of the word symbols. <laughs> That's okay. The symbols is a very specific category of images. For example, okay. if, if, you're, if you're seeing smoke coming out of a building, it's not a symbol for a, a burning room. It's an index for a burning room. It's like, there's a person, right. but but it's okay. Like it's colloquial language symbols. We, I, I take it. I just uh, can't leave this uncommented in this. That's fine. I'll try to um, try to be more precise next time. The thing is that we have to that we have to use a language that our audience understands, and that means that we have to be familiar enough to be um, uh, to be also to be appealing. Like when it comes to to genres, like this this whole. Um, Batman thing as a vampire is is very appealing in the long history of, of movie monsters and and um, and pulp and dark night things like like scary humans in the night 
um, genre thing. So if you look at the Batman, like if, if the first thing you would see from Batman would be like an image that is reminding you of Dracula, and you really dig Dracula, it's very helpful that there's this connection. That the ideas of Dracula, the way of he poses and he what he does with his cape, are used in the Batman as well, because the appeal of Dracula then translates to Batman, and you might get interested in Batman because you really think that scary uh, vampire guys are interesting to you. So you check it out. Um, here's, a, uh, here's another example for um, we have this is a cover for uh, a pulp movie, and this is the French cover for that same pulp movie, and uh, this all will later come down to, where's the mouse here, um, this all will later come down to this promotional image for, um, bur for the Burial at Sea DLC for the latest Bioshock game which is playing in Rapture. Rapture is uh, an Art Deco city, which has a very, which is a period piece, so um, if you want to use like authentic images, like authentic architecture, authentic print advertising for that area, you, you basically, there's no way around of using what other people have designed. It's just yeah. so old that probably nobody is going to object to that. But it's it's pretty arbitrary what kind of um, design reuse is is acceptable. So here are just a few comparisons to see where they use individual elements. Um, for the rendering style of the female character, they use a painting style which has been established by an artist from that area, uh, from that time era, which is called Tamara de Lempica, um, and then. Finally, as a comparison, you can see the layout and the way the male characters posed into the image. Um, how they basically to create to they to to create a very authentic film noir promotional image for their film noir themed game content. They um, actually pretty. Pretty um, like well, what's the what's the English word? Like it's actually a pretty crass um, reuse of ideas that mm. have been popular in the film noir uh, genre when it comes to movies. But that is what makes this authentic. And if you want to make a film noir piece of content, you there's a limit to how original you can be without losing the connection to the genre yeah. you want to have, right? Which brings us back to the like identifying what's essential. Like you yeah. can get, you can leave, and the farther you leave the like the core, um, and the the nimbus, like the wider ideas, like people smoking. Like I don't think a noir story needs like a detective smoking. No. Uh, but the farther you move, remove from this these like um, superficial trappings that aren't part of the core but are still um, part of the genre. The harder it is for people to recognize what this is about, especially on on uh, first glance, especially on first glance. So I keep um, thinking of, of the movie Brick, which I would describe as a noir movie, which didn't use any noir trappings at all. It just like it's not it doesn't it's not the detective. It has more of a high school setting. Yeah. Now, superficial elements make you think it's a different thing, but when underneath it, it feels like a noir movie. Yeah, you can recognize it at one. Um, my, my, one. One of my favorite examples for this is the movie Drive. Have you seen it? Yeah. Yeah. Which is which is only a noir movie if you watch it because it's set in the 80s, and um, or like visually it's basically set in the 80s. But the lighting and the story structure, these are all ideas that come from noir or have been popularized during the noir noir era. And you have really have to dive into the film to 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 recognize this. Um, video games are very superficial first impression, like currently at least, or at mainstream games. Um, like the, the the screenshot needs to click. The screenshot needs already needs to have all the the necessary visual cues 
to 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 trigger um, to basically trigger the to trigger the response. So um, I would like, since it's now um, uh, ten before three, I would like to take a ten minute ten minute break so that we get back um, around three, and then we will do the the research for ideas and sorting and preparation um, in practice, basically. All right. Um... And then do you remember if last time we stopped the broadcast and we can restart it? I'm not sure right now. <laughs> I don't know. Like, uh, we'll we'll give it a try. Yeah, if it we'll, uh, breaks apart, we'll have to restart a new hangout. On it, air, it, does this break the recording or something? Mm, I don't think so. I, I can write, we have 10 minute break on the screen and then we just leave it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll try and stop the broadcast. I'm pretty sure Okay. All right, All right. See, you, uh, see, see you guys at, uh, at 3 o'clock. Yeah, at 3 o'clock or whatever right. your time zone is. Yeah, at the right. full hour, right? Yeah.